Hi, my name's Kevin. Thanks, Stefan, for that introduction. Uh, I feel very honored and privileged to have a chance to uh, share with you guys something that is very important to me, that's very near and dear to my heart, and that is a topic of Christian apologetics. Uh, we're going to talk about what that is, why it's important, um, how it might benefit you and others that you care about. Um, uh, first of all, I want to give you just a little bit more background on myself so you can sort of get an idea of what kind of guy I am. Um, I am an engineer by trade. I work on uh, designing electronic chips for cell phones, but let's get this out there right now. That doesn't mean I'm a smart guy. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty much a regular guy. <laughs> I just happen to uh, I just happen to really like this topic and find that it has, it has impacted my life in a positive way over the years, and I'm excited to share it with other people. So, um, outside of the uh, the work world, I am a sort of a DIY car gearhead kind of guy. Uh, my wife and I have a nonprofit where we help people get their cars fixed. I love working on cars, getting greasy. Uh, we like to go on trail rides and ATVs and four wheel drives. And so I find myself in the garage a lot of weekends working on uh, various vehicles. Um, uh, most importantly for this, uh, for this conversation, I'm a Christian out of necessity. And uh, what I mean by that is Christianity to me is not a leap of faith. It's not something that I'm just hoping is true. Um, it's not something that, that uh, I chose to follow because it resonates warmly with my heart or uh, sort of uh, uh, makes me feel at one with the world or the universe or anything like that. Uh, rather, uh, Christianity to me is something that seems to be most likely true. Um, I've examined a lot of the evidence and the information out there on the history of Jesus, um, the history of the Bible, the evidence for the resurrection, and I find that uh, uh, it's more likely than not by a long, a large margin that the story in the Bible, the teachings of Jesus, actually describe the way the world and the universe uh, actually is. And so, so I really have no choice uh, but to be a Christian. Um, and uh, we'll talk more about that. Um, um, it's not that I, I, I still, I still uh, enjoy <laughs> being a Christian, not to say that it's some sort of stoic thing where, where uh, there's no emotional component to my belief, but uh, um, uh, I'm largely grounded by uh, the evidence and the facts that I find to indicate the story of Christianity is actually true in reality. Okay, so let's get started. Um, we're talking about today, we're talking about Christian apologetics, what it is. What and why? So uh, people like to go to the dictionary, so why not? Let's go to the dictionary. And uh, strangely, uh, I just looked up the word apology, and uh, you know, people think, why do you guys call this apologetics? What are you sorry about? And, and uh, if you just look at the, the strict definition from the dictionary, the second definition is something that we don't hear very often. Uh, apology means something that is said or written to defend something that other people criticize, make a defense. Strange, I never really think that, uh, that apology has that second definition, but sure enough, it does. Um, Bobby Conway is a preacher in North Carolina. Uh, he's also the author and the uh, founder of, of a YouTube channel called One Minute Apologist. He says, he uses the definition, apologetics seeks to give credible answers to curious questions. I kind of like that definition. Um, the definition I really like, uh, almost a redefinition of the phrase Christian apologetics, has been made popular by somebody you've probably heard of, Lee Strobel, from The Case for Christ. He's also been on a TV show called Faith Under Fire, and many books have been written. Uh, uh, he's, a, he's a great guy. And then another sort of a more newcomer to uh, the apologetic scene is Jim Wallace, J. Warner Wallace. He's written three or four books now. Cold Case Christianity was his first book. He's a retired detective. A uh, cold case homicide detective from LA. He's been made famous on Dateline many times. I like to call it Christian case making. Basically, what we're talking about is being able to make a case for Christianity, a cogent, clear, simple, and convincing case for why we think Christianity is actually the way the world is. Well, well why is it important to make a case or to be able to make a case for Christianity? Um, Sure, it can be done, but why should we? Well, the first reason comes straight from the Bible, 1 Peter 3.15. And you've probably heard this many times, uh, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. And so, uh, of course, the last part is the most important part. Do so with gentleness and respect. 
And you're going to find lots of people who can give reasons or defenses for what they believe, but they leave out the last part. And, and as far as I'm concerned, those defenses don't go very far. They fall at the feet of the people and never make it into, into their ears and their minds and their hearts. So we want to be able to um, explain why we think Christianity is true, why Jesus is real, why his plan for our lives is the best plan and the true plan. Uh, but we want to do that in such a way that uh, it's, it's sort of engulfed and encompassed in love for the people that we're speaking with. So um, you probably heard of this guy um, from Penn and Teller. Uh, there's a video out here. He's an ardent atheist. Um, he's interesting to watch, especially in a video with a, such a close-up of his face. Uh, but um, this video, if you YouTube, go to YouTube and, and uh, uh, search for pen and proselytize and watch this video sometime. Uh, it's pretty interesting uh, what, how he talks about a Christian that he came in contact with. Again, he's not a believer. He's, I don't think he'll ever be a believer. Um, he's a very firm atheist. But he has a certain amount of respect for a certain type of, of uh, Jesus follower. And you might be interested to watch that video. It's definitely interesting to watch. How about this guy? Have you heard of this guy? Uh, we're on the topic here of why do we care? Why are we interested in being able to make a case for Christianity? Uh, this Jim Bergen from uh, our very own church. Um, some time ago, hopefully you can see the quote. It's a little pixelated because I snapped it with my camera real quick. Uh, it says, there is a heaven and there is a hell. And every person in history will spend eternity in one or the other based on what they did with Jesus Christ. I think that's a great, that's a great saying. And, and why do I bring that up? Because basically, I'm interested in apologetics and being able to make a case for Christianity because I believe hell is real. Um, I think that people are going to go there. Now, there's, there's debate even within uh, uh, Christian circles about what hell looks like whether it's forever, whether it's really fire, whether it's going to end. Um, I'm not too interested in the, that particular debate right now. I just think it is a real place, and it's not a great place to be. And uh, so I'm convinced that the Bible teaches that, and, and I don't want my friends and, uh, and most of my enemies to go there. So, uh, um, so this is a reason that, that uh, encompasses my interest in apologetics and Christian case-making. And uh, hopefully you can think through that too and see if it's, it's compelling to you to, to continue to learn more about this particular field. Okay, a few more reasons about why it's important to be able to make a case for Christianity. First, first of all, uh, in the category of those who already are not believers, uh, or cur currently are not believers, um, it's important to be able to make a case for Christianity to better show love to those people who don't follow Jesus. Non-believers do have questions and are curious uh, in some sense um, about what this thing the Bible is and what it teaches and what's the big deal about Jesus. And those questions beg for answers. We need to have some answers for them. Uh, saying the Bible says so uh, doesn't cut it anymore like maybe it used to. Uh, most people these days, uh, uh, society has changed a little bit. You can't sit down with them, open the Bible and say, well, here's uh, heaven, here's hell. Um, Jesus died for your sins and therefore you should uh, uh, fall under his leadership and give your life to, to follow him. Uh, those sorts of things generally don't seem to cut it anymore in, in today's culture and society. So I think more so now than ever, uh, we as Christians have the responsibility to be able to speak in the, in the uh, marketplace of ideas, so to speak, about Christianity in a way that's sensible. Um, secondly, there's a second category of people that I think apologetics uh, is good, is helpful to, and those are people like ourselves who uh, already follow Jesus. Um, we need to be able to show love to those who already follow Jesus. Apologetics helps us process our own doubts. Um, uh, I think anybody who doesn't doubt from time to time uh, is probably not being honest with themselves. And, and the things that we learn by studying apologetics, by studying theology, um, basically uh, provides our heart a rock to lean on when times are tough. Um, I, I don't know if you've seen the movie Fireproof, one of these sort of cheesy Christian movies, but uh, I really like the, the comment, the, the concept that's mentioned in there about how we need to be able to lead our hearts. Our hearts are not exactly uh, uh, immune from, from bad thinking, <laughs> so to speak. And, and uh, when times get bad, we're in the middle of this coronavirus thing right now. There's a lot of people 
questioning, well, where is God in all this? How can God allow this to happen? How can evil be present in, in the world today? And it's a study of theology, the study of uh, Christian case making and apologetics that provide us answers, uh, very clear, very simple answers for what God's doing at, at times like this, how he can be present even when bad things seem to happen. And, and sometimes when our hearts wanna run and our hearts wanna give up and our hearts wanna stop believing, it's the things that we know in our minds that can uh, bring us back in line and, and carry us through these, these hard times um, and get to the other side. So um, apologetics uh, keeps our minds alive and engaged. There we go. There are some common objections to some of this stuff. Um, you probably have heard many people say you can't argue anyone into becoming a believer. Okay, lots of folks believe that. Um, I guess I could argue with that, but uh, <laughs> we'll save that for later. <laughs> um, all we need to do is be loving, another common objection. We just need to show love for people. Um, got some more stuff to say about that coming up as well. Um, I'm, I sort of alluded to this at the beginning of the, of the video today. Um, this stuff is only for super smart people or the cerebral types. Um, uh, I don't think that's true. I think that, uh, and I could be wrong about this, um, but I think that, that um, there are bits and pieces of, of data that we have from the study of Christian case making and from theology itself that anyone can have access to. That the life of the mind is real in, in anyone at any stage and with any amount of intelligence. I'm, I'm a regular guy here, and, and uh, this study has helped me a lot through a lot of hard times, and hopefully it's, it will help other people as well. Um, so uh, the next question that kind of comes up is, what is the best way to share or defend our faith with others? We've already talked about doing so with gentleness and respect. Um, there's all sorts of ways you might have encountered. Um, uh, Sometime when I was in college, we did cold calling. We'd knock on doors on Wednesday night in the dormitories. It was horrible. I couldn't stand it. Uh, um, passing out tracts, people on the streets with uh, crosses and engaging in arguments, maybe social media sorts of things. There's all sorts of ways to engage. Uh, one of our upcoming sessions will be about this and, and about a very um, easy, simple, and effective way to engage people in any, in any situation with any amount of knowledge you do or do not have. So stay tuned for that. Um, in summary, we've talked about ap apologetics, uh, another word for it that I happen to like, but a phrase, Christian case making. So um, this is motivated by our legitimate care and concern for other people. It's also motivated by legitimate care and concern for ourselves and uh, being prepared for hard times like we're in now, um, being able to lead our hearts um, with information from the Bible that we know to be true. And we've also talked a little bit about common objections. What's coming up? These are the things we have in mind to talk about. We're in the Easter season right now. Um, so we'd like to have a little, a little small uh, uh, session about what's the big deal about Easter? Why are Christians obsessed with Easter? Um, you may think this is a silly question. Uh, maybe it is, but uh, we'll keep the video short on that one. Uh, what's the big deal about Easter? Why is this, why is this really the pinnacle of our, of our faith? Um, we're going to talk about how to engage with others without even knowing anything. Stay tuned for that. And uh, then we'll have a, a brief intro to the evidence uh, for the resurrection of Jesus. So that also sort of ties back into Easter and the pinnacle of our faith. There may be some other topics along the way. We'll see how it goes. So thanks again for spending some time with me today on this topic. Hopefully you'll find it useful. Uh, thanks to Stefan for the opportunity to do so. And we'll see you again soon.